yet you may think you've heard it all before. Eat fat is the revolutionary advice of Dr. McCartney. In the days when we had no agriculture and there was no starch in our food, no potatoes, no bread, no cereals, everybody had to live by hunting on meat and fat, and in those days I believe that they were all slim. Today there are hundreds of books available on the subject, and it may take a while to decide which diet works best. Advice can appear contradictory or may change over time. I'm afraid that the diet industry has just got out of hand. Uh, any two-bit person can come up with a piece of advice, get it published, get it publicized, get it in the newspapers, and it is the latest fad. And, and that is not good for humanity in any shape or form. And now a leading cardiologist, Dr. Asim Malhotra, says certain types of fat are good for you. Now what Dr. Malhotra is telling us is that eating saturated fats in non-processed food He's talking about eggs, milk, butter, cheese, meat, for example, probably lowers your risk of heart disease. The doctor also recommends a Mediterranean-type diet, things like olive oil, oily fish and nuts. That will not only, he says, help to tackle heart disease, but also decreases your likelihood of suffering with dementia. These days we're more aware than ever before of the importance of what we eat, how we eat, and how it affects our health. John McGuire, BBC News, Bristol. Well, let's talk to uh, Dr. Asim Malhotra, who wrote that paper, and uh, NHS dietitian Catherine Collins joins us from our London studio. Very good morning to you both. Dr. Malhotra, you are turning wisdom on its head, aren't you, going back to the 50s? Sure. Well, you know, it's very interesting, this whole discussion and debate around what's healthy and what's not, and, you know, there's been debates for the last 30 or 40 years. Um, the original uh, study that suggested that saturated fat was bad came from the 1970s from a scientist called Ansel Keys. And even in his paper called The Seven Country Study, he suggested there was a possible association between saturated fat, cholesterol and heart disease. That, did, that was a correlation, but didn't really prove it. Now, since then, several studies have been done. In fact, um, researchers in Harvard reviewed 21 studies involving about 350,000 people over about 20 years, and they concluded there is no convincing evidence of the saturated fat with heart disease. Well, let's, can, can we sort of try and get through some of this stuff? Uh, for example, if there are a lot of people watching this, particularly people I think maybe of an older generation who eat a lot of butter. Now, if you eat a lot of butter, that will raise your cholesterol levels. That's a fact, yes? Does that not necessarily increase your risk of heart disease or heart attack? Charlie, I'm very glad you asked that question. So, first of all, I'm not going to eat lots of butter, but certainly in terms of alternatives, such as low-fat spreads and margarines, we know that butter is healthy, and there's studies that have proven that. You know, analysis of uh, something called the Sydney Heart Study revealed that heart patients that replaced um, butter with margarine had an increased risk of cardiovascular death, despite the fact that cholesterol was lowered. Now, to go into more detail on that, we know that saturated fat, specifically from dairy and non-processed food, is healthy. What happens to cholesterol is LDL cholesterol is traditionally thought of as a bad cholesterol, but within LDL... The one caused by butter. Absolutely, but within LDL cholesterol we have what we call large subparticles and small subparticles. Now the large subparticles which are raised by saturated fat are not supposed to be atherogenic, they do not cause damage to the heart arteries. The small subparticles of LDL, influenced by carbohydrate and sugar, is more atherogenic or, or harmful. And the problem we have is a whole industry has developed promoting low-fat products that are loaded with sugar. I actually saw a patient last week who came to me and said, Doctor, listen, I've, I'm trying to lose weight. I'm eating these low-fat products. I've gained 20 kilograms. It's okay. Oh. Catherine, you are a dietitian. People come to you for advice. You tell people whether they should be spreading their toast thickly with butter or margarine. Are you having palpitations listening to this? <laughs> a little bit. I think um, all people that work in healthcare, especially in relation to heart disease, need to use the power of evidence, not anecdote. And from the research, as, as Dr. Mahotra has mentioned, we know that a high total fat, a high saturated fat, uh, lack of activity, smoking, and a much higher body weight are all associated risks for cardiovascular disease. And as a dietitian, I'm more interested actually uh, in trying to protect those 2,000 people that will have a heart attack today in actually preventing them from developing a heart attack. And if they do, giving them the really sound evidence-based advice to make sure they don't get a second one. What Dr. Mahotra has said is quite disingenuous. Yes, there are some parts of uh, butter and animal dairy fats 
which are protective against heart disease, but they're present in very tiny amounts in the actual full fat product. And in fact, what we have done as nutritionists, as dietitians, is moved on from individual uh, substances like fat, saturated fat, carbohydrate, fructose, and looked at evidence-based eating on the basis of whole foods. And that's the basis of the Mediterranean diet, on which we both agree. So, Dr. you accused me disingenuous. Now, I mean, I suppose in some ways one of the dangers is, and, and you can easily blind us with science here, that people will hear what you're saying and say, do you know what, I'm going to go with what he said, and I'll just carry on eating lots of butter and cheese and everything that I always did, and lots of red meat, because he said it. And would that be what they can take from what you've said? No, I, I think we have to have a balance here. The ultimate message is eat real food, you know, avoid processed food, because processed food is potentially harmful. We know that for example, there are products, as I've said already, that are loaded with sugar that are marketed as low fat, and people will buy products based upon the way they're promoted. But just to back up the evidence base, in fact, Sweden, only four days ago, became the first Western country to change their nutritional guidelines on the review of 16,000 studies saying that a low um, carbohydrate diet, one which is higher in fat, actually is healthier for weight loss and improving cholesterol profile. So this isn't just anecdote, this is not opinion. This is based upon scientific evidence. And to, to add on from uh, Catherine's point as well, current nutritional guidelines are not in keeping with scientific evidence. The current Eat Well plate, which is promoted by the NHS um, website and the government and the Food Standards Agency and the British Dietetic Association, has a can of cola on there as part of their balanced diet. That's akin to saying you can smoke a packet of cigarettes as part of a healthy lifestyle. It's obscene. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we have to leave it there. Catherine, thank you very much for your time this morning. I know it's, it's a huge topic, and thank you for your, your research today. Yeah, it's caused um, big headlines. Good to see you.